I have been thoroughly enjoying the Penguin Show on Max. It's the uh, the direct follow up to the Batman movie. It's a series starring Colin Farrell about the Penguin and his rise to power in Gotham. And uh, I've watched episodes one, two, and three at this point. I'm really enjoying it. I'm I'm really happy to be so- seeing something that's coming out that I'm thoroughly into. That's really well told stories, very interesting characters, very engaging from top to bottom, and I'm loving it. And so I I want to do a little reaction to the behind the scenes, one of the videos that's been put out on the making of the Penguin, get a little bit of a feel for the intention of the creators, and I'm going to do a reaction video of it. So let's go ahead and enjoy this together, and I'll be sharing my thoughts throughout and after, so stick around. What was exciting to me was to tell a Gotham story. I wanted this all to be a kind of crime tapestry, a crime saga. Matt like talked that. to me a lot about what he was trying to depict in Gotham as a city, Gotham as a character. And Oz is just a normal man who is underestimated and wants more for himself. We really get to dig in and get to explore his life and his history plays a huge part in the unfolding of our tale. The story we're telling feels like a very human story. We wanted to... De- it, it does feel like a very human story. It actually reminds me a lot of Sopranos, especially the relationship with his mom. It's very, very cool. Picked class disparity in Gotham. Batman is up high looking down at the city, but Oz is down on the ground looking up, wanting to get up there to that penthouse. And that's, look, I feel like it's such a fresh, a breath of fresh air to hear these kind of thoughts and these kind of considerations um, coming from creators, coming from people who know how to craft a story, uh, comparing it to like Rings of Power and stuff like, and the Acolyte, it's such shallow storytelling. This is so rich. This is such a good show, man. story picks up right at the end of the Batman. The Riddler has blown up the seawall. So there's been a, a lot of flooding all throughout Gotham City and Gotham is really a disaster zone. We decided that we would kind of descend through the Gotham from the film into the dirty, less wealthy streets. The mythical yeah. place that we're creating is very much New York in the late 70s, when it was just coming out of its worst period of decay. I feel like our production design should get all the awards on the planet. For them to reconfigure New York to be Gotham, for it to feel like a different place, but still have the heart and soul. So the idea of introducing more handheld and being on the streets and having the camera swing around and be in a place that felt as rich and alive as what we wanted our Gotham to be. This is one of those moments, you know, where you gotta ask yourself, what kind of life do I want? The Penguin is a character that has often been portrayed as this super villain that is like smart and rich, looking down kind of on the rest of the people. We thought it would be interesting to turn that on its head. I was Carmine Falcone's right hand. So a lot of, I, I always have criticism of people like subverting audience expectations when it comes to stories. I am gonna be way more forgiving of that if the story's really good if it's told in a really really fun awesome interesting way and unfortunately a lot of subversion of source material right or audience expectations is not executed well and comes off as frustrating but this is just very well done and very um, enjoyable and so i'm really I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying seeing this journey that the Penguin's on in this fresh take. We could think of it being something, you know, a couple of tank cues one night. This is a character that wants to be revered, recognized by all, but in particular, those closest to him. This city is meant to be yours, sweetheart. What are you gonna do to get it? The two main criminal families in Gotham are the Moroni family and the Falcone family. Alberto Falcone is fashioning himself as the new leader of the Falcone family. And then introducing us to Sophia, to a woman who is the daughter of Carmine Falcone, and everyone's thrown by her. 
friggin' Sophia. What? Sophia acting against um, the penguin against Oz. <sighs> Fresh kiss. Some really good character relationships going on in this film, this story, this series, right? Not a film. It's immediately intriguing. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. I always get confused. When something's so good and so well-crafted, I sometimes forget it's a series. She's incredibly smart. She's incredibly industrious. It's like many people in the world, she is a threat. You've really moved up in the world, haven't you? She fears no one, which is why they find her so intimidating. You know, Oz, people underestimate you, but not me. I've always known you were capable of more. The way I viewed Oz and the way I depicted him just had a different view on masculinity, not just a man who wants power. I think he wants people's respect. Leaning into some of that kind of like New York mob kind of thing, you know, respect. It's not just about masculinity, it's about respect, right? Lauren's amazing. She did such a really extraordinary job. There were certain relationships that were explored in a particular way that I hadn't in 25 years as an actor ever explored. Trust me, it's just the beginning. This is a rise to power story. It's quite bold, it's incredibly violent. The themes explored are just extraordinarily dark. Mm. It's been a tremendous gift to be able to explore this world, these stories, and all of these forms in a way that I don't know anyone's ever got to do in exactly the way we're getting to do. The no king been a god, though. All right. So I just want you to take a second and think, all right? When you watch the Batman starring Robert Pattinson as Batman, right? The Riddler, the Penguin was in it, right? Oz was in it. When you just like close your eyes and think like, did you enjoy that film? Did you find it mid, right? A lot of people landed somewhere in that spectrum. I don't think there was like a ton of people that hated the movie. Um, I think a, a lot of people were just like, there was parts I didn't like. There's a lot of parts I did like, right? And so it either lands in the middle or really high ranking. I was kind of, I was giving it kind of like a seven or eight out of 10. I, visually, I thought it was the, one of the most amazing films I've ever seen visually. Um, however, like the story wise, there were some things lacking, but overall I was fascinated. I was like, I'll take more of this. If we keep building in this direction, I think we'll build, get some momentum. And then when I saw they were doing a Penguin series, I was like, Fascinating. I wonder if this is going to help that momentum. And not only is it helping, it's gaining so much momentum for the next Batman movie. Now, I also, uh, you know, comparing another DCIP recently with the Joker or just Joker, I guess. Everybody, most people really liked the first one, even though it was a subversion of audience expectations for Joker. Now this new one came out and ev almost everybody hates it. Almost everybody thinks it's complete garbage and it doesn't have anything that people liked about the first movie. In fact, it ruins the first movie for viewers. With this, I'm really hoping, like Matt Reeves, the guy who's uh, the executive producer for the show, he's the director and producer for the Batman and it's going to be for the Batman, the next one, part two, I think. Um, he's going in the right direction. Like, Batman was pretty okay. It's hard to get Batman right because people have such high expectations for what they want out of Batman. But if you came out with a movie that people didn't just despise, you're in a good shape, right? Then they're doing this show that's a continuation of different type of Batman storytelling. But people are okay with this because it's really good. It's actually interesting. People are getting invested in a show that, like, bridges to movies is a really smart strategy because if you are okay with the first movie and then this this show is really good and it really actually builds your excitement for the next movie if you make that second movie a real banger 
then like this could be legendary for the Batman franchises. Um, however, you really got to deliver. So I would say they're definitely on the right direction. Brilliant strategy to bridge two movies with a series that is literally like a, literally a bridge film, film show, right? With the penguin as the main character of that show, a villain. They're getting so much good graces right now in the in for their for the Batman, and then looking forward to the second Batman um, with this show. The expectations will be high again, so I hope they deliver on the next one. I believe Greg Frazier, he's the cinematographer who did the first um, movie. He's going to be coming back for the second movie. So visually, I'm expecting the next Batman to be incredible visually. I just hope that Matt Reeves lives up to the storytelling principle and does a really awesome movie with the next one. And uh, But I'm having a great time on the Penguin journey. Let me know in the comments if you're watching the show and what you think about the Penguin so far. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please like this uh, video so that it, more people can watch it. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and like it. And consider subscribing to the channel to watch more videos like this in the future. Thanks so much. See you next time.